Hello YouTube and happy 2016! I realized I was a little messed up, and I realized we're a little in the 2016, about the point where we start abandoning our resolutions, but I don't want to talk about New Year's, I want to talk about Christmas, and more what I actually received for Christmas. One thing was the mail, inkling amiibo, um, a SNES cartridge of a Super Mario Kart, can you, can you see that? Um, a brand new mic, that looks like it's a pretty nice one, the Blue Yeti, and the subject of today's video. The At Games Sega Genesis. I actually knew that I'd be receiving this ever since Black Friday. I told my parents to pick it up because at Walgreens it was only $35. I bet you're wondering, why in 2015 would I want a Sega Genesis, especially when I already have one? Well, the answer is quite simple. 80 games built into it, 40 tried and true Sega games, and then 41 that At Games made using the Sega Genesis technology. So let's check out what we've got here. So the first thing you're gonna notice about the At Games Genesis is that you've got wireless controllers. That is awesome, okay? They just need some batteries and um, I, I can't get to it. Uh, where's the screwdriver? Oh, I don't know, I'll just use this thing and, oh, it uses triple A's? Yeah, I ain't doing that. The good news is that you can actually plug in your Sega controllers and any cartridge that you just happen to have. So let's check out Sonic and Knuckles. Ah! ah. What the? Yikes. Okay, for those of you who don't know, Sonic and Knuckles is not supposed to sound like that. Sonic and Knuckles actually has some of the best video game music of all time. I'll actually let you listen to it right now on a real video game console. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I sure can, and I just gotta ask, why? Why spring through the technology of wireless controllers, but a sound chip that is somehow worse than the one that you used in 1989? Well, let's look at the games. I just gotta say, I love the selection of what they have here. Some really, really good ones. But with what they have, I wonder why they don't have some of the ones. For example, they have the stellar Shinobi 3, but they don't have its great prequel, Revenge of Shinobi. But hey, don't worry about it. I'll talk about both of these in due time. Another game that they're missing is Sonic 3. They have Sonic 2, and the sequel to Sonic 3, Sonic & Knuckles. If I had to take a guess as to why Sonic 3 isn't here, it's because it had a save system. And if they're not going to get a 30-year-old sound chip, a battery is completely out of the question. But with the specs out of the way, let's see what the 40 non-Sega games have to offer. Off First off is Air Hockey. Pretty simple stuff. The hit detection is a little shoddy. For example, this isn't a goal, but this is? Actually, it turns out that the black bits on the side are what I'm supposed to be defending. I mean, I guess that's fine. I've just never seen an air hockey table like this. My favorite part is that in this game, you can actually move your paddle all the way past the midway point into enemy lines. Yeah, get wrecked, scrub. Next is the first in a series of games I like to call Lumosity Games. For those of you who don't know, there's this site called Lumosity where you can play a few games and it actually stops polio from eating your brain or something. And the games are a little bit fun, but on a subconscious level are actually making you smarter. In Black Sheep, you are shown a bunch of sheep and you have to find the middle one and tap which way it's facing. There's not much to this one. I mean, it does feel good to know that I'm increasing brain function right now, but when I could be playing Streets of Rage, I feel like I've been swindled. The next game is called Bomber. It's Bomberman. I mean, it has all the power-ups and everything, and it gives you three lives, but it really can't hold the attention of anyone. The Sega had a real Bomberman game, so this one isn't worth your time, especially since the AI is really bad. Since the day of my birth, my death began its walk. It's walking towards me now. Without hurrying. The next game wasn't very much fun because I didn't know it yet, but I had a janky A button. My A button didn't work. Every other button worked fine, but I could only play this game using the A button. That was actually a very common practice for these games. 
you only need one button to play, and they expect it to be the A button. Meaning that those games, for me at least, were unplayable. Bulls and Cows. I have no clue what in the blue blazes I'm looking at. I have no clue. There's only one thing that I know for certain about Bulls and Cows. There ain't any bulls, and there ain't any cows. Now this game stood out for me the most. Cannon. The arrow in the middle of the screen indicates the direction and strength of the wind. Pay attention because it can change the bullet trajectory. If you get lucky, maybe there will be no wind to be worried. Oh, 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 oh Wendy, settle down. Don't, don't worry. I'm sure Zephyr loves you. He's just going through a really story part in his life right now. I'm talking to wind! And by the way, the worrisome wind doesn't change direction. I actually got to a round where the wind was blowing so hard that even at a 45 degree angle and maximum power, the enemy could not shoot the cannon far enough to hit me. So it employed a flawless technique. Yep, that's right. It's literally nothing. And it's not going to be anything either. <laughs> you get it? I know I can't beat you. One of your turns, you're just gonna kill me. So, uh, I've decided it's not gonna be your turn ever. I'm just gonna keep having my turn until you give up. Even if it means we have to stand here until the end of time. Capiche? But that's not even the worst part of this game. When the wind actually makes it so the computer can hit you, you lose! The next game is called Checker. It's that game where you gotta remove all the pieces on the board by jumping the other pieces. I don't know, I wasn't really good at it. I just kept loosing. Chess. It's chess. With the worst AI in the world, I think AI in this case stands for Artificial Idiocy. I moved my pawn here to put pressure on the knight, but instead of reacting, he just left it there to die. I also tried to set it up so we would trade his queen for my queen, but instead he just captured one of my pawns and left her there to die. Color Puzzle is just a Lumosity game where, I don't know, I just smashed left and right. I didn't want to think hard enough to do well at this game. The next game was called Crossing the Road. It's Frogger with several problems. The first problem is the Ugly as Sin title card. The second problem is that you can only control left and right with the D-pad, and you go forward by pressing a button, which means you can't go back. So if you get into position like this, you have to jump, but instead of getting run down in the street like the degenerate you are, you hop onto the car. The only way that you could die made in something useful. The final problem is that instead of a frog getting crushed by a car, in this game when you screw up, you get a human killed. The next game is curling. I lost him four seconds. Another Lumosity game is up next. It's actually kind of fun. You look at the screen and try to determine if there's more green or red hearts. It's actually kind of like the end of a Splatoon match. <laughs> well, not for me. Here, it's like a 55-45 difference, and when I play, the place is caked in whatever color my team was. Now, this game is one that definitely held my attention before I bought it, because I looked on the back of the box, and it was labeled Fight or Lose, but the picture said Fight and Lose. I need to know what it is. Those are two very distinctly different things. If it's Fight and Lose, I'm gonna try my hardest not to fight, because that means I'll lose. But if it's fight or lose, I I'm gonna come out of the gate swinging, just trying to hit everyone. <laughs> Let's find out what the game actually is. How about it? It's capturing pawns with a knight. There is no fighting involved. There's no losing involved. There's no winning involved if you spend a second of your time playing this game. The next game is called Firefly Glow. I'd like to make myself believe that this game isn't sucky. It's hard to say I'd rather play this game when I have better choices Because this game is just bad as it seems Yeah, I'm gonna go play Streets of Rage or something Formula Challenge As quickly as possible, you have to say what's bigger The number on the left or the right At first, it's pretty easy with just numbers 
but then later on they start doing adding and subtracting and by the end you're really just guessing because they're throwing in quadratic theorems and stuff i didn't know what was going on the next game was actually my favorite a very fun puzzle game hexagonos so there's cells and bacteria you take turns moving one or two spaces if you move one space you actually create a second spell where you move to but if you jump you simply move that space to another one but if you land next to an enemy, you actually convert them to your side. Now, I wanted to win, but the computer was too clever for me. I thought the game was completely over, but I kept playing. And using nothing but my debonair wit, I actually managed to have more cells than the enemy there at the end. The next game seemed like a ripoff of Collins. I couldn't do very well at it, is it? Because as I mentioned before, my A button is janky. Not a problem for other Sega games, since the button that you use it for A is usually your special attack. And if you only have one action, you can use all the buttons. I could not play this game with my controller. But who needs a crappy ripoff of columns when you literally, on the same system, have real columns and columns 3? Both of which will let me use the B and C buttons to shift the gems. The next game was unplayable because, again, only the A button worked. I would skip past it, but I want you to see the hellish nightmare that is jumping in this game. How does a system that has blast processing freak out from this? Logical Dial. Hard and unfun puzzle game. Mahjong. Needs the A button. And also needs to remember that I'm not going to play it since I'm not an 80 year old Chinese woman. Match 11. I don't know. The instructions made no sense. Also, why do these games need exclusively the A button to function? Memory. Literally reusing Mahjong tiles for a confusing memory game. Also reusing the control system that doesn't work if you have a defective controller. Memory Match was actually one of the fun and challenging Lumosity games. See, the suits come on here, and you gotta remember what was here. And if they match, you say yes, and when you don't remember, you hit no and get it wrong. It's fun. I like it. The next game is called Mr. Balls. The next game is called Naval Power. However, it probably should have been in the B's, cause it's freaking Battleship. You don't even get to place your ships, you just hope for a good formation. And if you get a bad formation, you lose. Panaglyph is a Lumosity game that I think would be a ton of fun if, you know, the A button on your controller works. And the next game is also a Lumosity game. Man, I wish they were sponsoring me for this. I've mentioned them like 50 times in this episode. Well, in this game, they show you a number and flash an alien. You gotta remember three numbers and also where the alien went. And then put the three numbers so they make sense in an equation that they show you. It's smart stuff, trust me on this one. The next game is Sparkling Truffle, but you might know it by its street name, Simon. The next game is called Spider. You must protect your anniversary cake from the arachnid invasion. For that, you have an uh, insecticide, which will help you drop off all the spiders, keeping them away from the cake. For each dropped spider, new ones could came up. Hold on, hold on, so let me get this straight. I made a cake for my anniversary, and some spiders are coming up, and I try to kill them with an insecticide. Even though, for each dropped spiders, new ones could came up? Yes, drop a bunch of insecticide-covered spiders onto my cake. I don't know. If I think if I were in this situation, I may act a little uh, differently. Oh, this is going to be absolutely perfect. Kayla is going to love what I've done. Wait, no. Spiders! Not this time! Sudoku quiz. It's Sudoku, but you use the A button. And here's the worst part about the, the A button games. Most of them, you also have the B button take you back to the main menu. So if your A button doesn't properly work and you're tap, 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 tapping on it, and you accidentally hit the B button, you lose all your Sudoku progress. Table Magic, the easiest version of three cup shuffle ever conceived by mankind. Treasure Hunt is actually pretty fun. They give you one second to see the map and you have to navigate it without hitting any of the obstacles. As it goes on, they add in keys that you need to get before going to the treasure chest. My only complaint is that it's on a 5x5 five five grid, so it's far too easy to trick anyone. Warehouse Keeper. 
I have no idea why anybody would put their name on this. Listen to that music. Look at this screen. They stole Shove It, made it hideous, and only used 10% of the screen. They didn't even bug test it. Stage complete? Good idea, except not a single box is on a single X. So what? You're the worst warehouse keeper ever. Whack a wolf. I don't know what this game is based on. It must be an original. It's really fun, and I was pretty good at it. I mean, I did club Little Red in the head a couple of times, and I didn't get a flawless score, but apparently I did perfect. There is one more game on this that I really should talk about, but I am honestly at a loss of words to describe it. I don't have any game making experience, but I know that I could make the game better than they did. I also have zero music making experience, and I know I could have done a better song than they did. Um, I'll just go ahead and put it on the end slate uninterrupted so you can just see with your own five senses, except maybe touch, how bad this game is, because I do not possess the words to, to ex accurately explain it. But hey, hey. This is, in fact, the At Games Sega Genesis Classic Game Console. If you want it for yourself, you can pick one up for just $50! I mean, it has those 40 terrible games, plus the sound quality of 40 classics just butchered to all heck. Or, for just $15, you can pick up Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, which has all of the audio just perfectly preserved, and it's got nine other games that that one really should have had.